everybody welcome to the beauty of pastel i have been getting so many questions lately thank you for sending those in about my little home studio so i thought i would give you a tour It's not very big, but believe me, I am so blessed to have a dedicated space to create. I remember painting, sitting on the floor cross-legged, sitting at coffee tables and dining room tables, trying to contain all of the art supplies that I collected over the years. And so over time, I kind of took over this little room in my home. Although it's small, it's really efficient. Now, do I wish I had more room? of course, because there's always room for more art supplies. I love being able to work at home as a stay-at-home mom as well. It's so important for me to be able to be at home when my kids are home. And so I'm gonna show you a few things that I really love working in a smaller space, things that are really efficient and help me create daily. Now I'll try not to make the video too wobbly, but I am going to move it slightly so you'll just have to bear with me. Um, I don't have a camera person. Right over here is my main easel. I painted this little piece yesterday. That's about a 30 by 40 centimeter piece. It is next to a west facing window, which is really nice for bright light. However, it can really cast some harsh shadows onto the easel. So I normally keep the blinds closed. However, if you see there are a few little, sorry about my finger, there are a few um, can lights pointed up at the ceiling and at the walls that is painted a really nice bright neutral color that helps the bounce light fill in the light on the easel itself i also have a dust catcher that i created with just a simple scored piece of foam core whenever you're painting with pastel there is there are pastel particles that drift down and you need to be able to catch those or you're going to have a mess on your floor. I have that dust catcher clamped to the easel mainly because I don't want to accidentally hit it and knock it off onto the floor. You don't want those pastel particles to poof up into the air because pastel can injure your lungs if you're not very careful. So just use caution. I try to clean it out pretty regularly. Now right next to my easel, right down here, is my pastel palette. I'm gonna switch the camera around so I can show it to you. Okay, so there's my easel. There's a piece that I worked on yesterday. There's my little clamped dust catcher. I do need to clean it out. You can see all the dust that's in it right now. I don't want that in the floor or on the air. And then here is my current pastel palette. I have this old box that I got from a pastel company. It's no longer sold. And I am looking for a new solution for storing a lot of my pastels because I have so many that they're starting to kind of pile up and it's hard to see all of the colors that I have. I have this old the table that belonged to my grandmother for now but I am looking for a little bit of a wider longer solution I also have some different supplies here that I use often of course alcohol this is a little bit of workable fixative I have more alcohol I have tin plates and some tape and some implements that I kind of keep on hand of course more pastels pencils brushes and I mainly have my pastel palettes set up in different hues and different different values. So this side, of course, is the lighter value. You can even see that. And it moves to darker values. This section right here is what I like to call my dirt section or the grayed versions of these colors. I pull from this section probably most often. And in the middle here are pastels that I'm currently working on for this piece. So as I pull pastels to work on a current painting, I like to kind of line them up here in the middle so I can find them again. If I put them back where they went, sometimes it's hard to find them, especially since there are so many. So as I'm working, you can see that I have my pastel palette just right here. And then to the left is where I keep a lot of my paper, especially pre-cut papers, pads, any kind of um, paper that I just wanna pull up and put right on my easel. I also have a large roll of UART sanded paper that I don't keep over here just because it is pretty big. Okay, let's move on to behind my easel. This is a more storage. I have these really nice long shelves that also belong to my grandmother. I have some 
brushes over here. I have rags for wiping my hands. I have my foam, washcloths, watercolors, more rags, lots and lots of cleaning supplies. And I also have my inks, pencils, clips for hanging my work around. I even have saved pastel dust right here because when you save pastel dust you can actually make new pastels with it by adding a little bit of distilled water and creating a paste. I keep it covered just because I don't want dust in it. Now down below all of this more supplies. I have framing supplies, I have watercolors, these boxes contain more pastels based on if I have extras. Some of them are very small and broken, so I've stored them away. That one doesn't have very many in it at all. So you can see I have quite a few more that I have set aside. This right here um, is exactly what I was speaking of a couple of weeks ago about how to store and frame pastels. I have a whole stack of semi-current paintings that are stored in these tracing paper pads and I can go directly to them to find them for clients and for framing purposes. I also have old sketchbooks. Of course, there's some more paint, my first camera. Then as we move over here, I've got some more clips. This is trimmed off UART that I can grab, especially if I'm working on a very small study. This is my box of new pastels that I haven't pulled. And then I have more new pastels that I've ordered open stock. And also some charcoal, just different supplies. These are really, really handy. And then I have some more framing equipment, um, shipping, shipping labels, um, how to, I, I love to wrap my paintings as they're sold in brown paper packages tied up with string. I have some linen tape for hinging. I also love to set paintings against this shelf. More supplies, painting supplies. These are mostly my daughter loves to use these acrylic paints and then regular other crafty things that I have that aren't necessarily pastel stamps, watercolor paints. I have sewing supplies, adhesives lots of little things in there. I also have quite a few paintings just kind of set on top that I am in the process of either framing or as I mentioned earlier that are currently kind of inspiring me in the studio. And so I love to keep the paintings around. Um, it's just really fun to see all of them. I get a lot of questions about this piece right here with these vintage patterns. Those patterns belong to my grandmother and I framed them myself. They're so much fun to look at. Just really, really beautiful patterns. Right now they're all, they're all covered up, but I get a lot of questions about that. It was really fun to create and frame those patterns. And over here behind the door, I have quite a few boards, backer boards and some large mounted boards that I pull so I can put paper on and start painting. This right here is what I like to call my extras drawer, which is where I store pastels that I've broken in half so I can see and reorder the colors later on. So for instance, if I ran out of this color, isn't that beautiful? I could, re I could refer to this pastel, see what number it was and reorder it. This works best of course with larger pastels because I do usually break mine in half. These are Terry Ludwig, the beautiful grays. These are Unisons, of course, I love them. And these are great Americans back here. I also have some boxes of open stock pastels that I've done the same thing with. And I just keep it right here by my desk. Right next to that table across from my easel, you can see how small my little room is. There's my easel. Here's my computer. I work a lot there. I'm sitting in that chair all the time. You can see that I have more paintings hung. I have some different pastel equipment. This is what I use to grind up small pastels to make new pastels or even the dust. Uh, I have my coffee and my water, which is highly important as an artist, and some video audio equipment. Um, my Wacom tablet, which I love. I use that a ton for editing. Um, I'm at this table a lot. And of course my calendar, one of the most important things that I use in the studio. 
I also have a small restroom and closet, more storage, more shelving off of this room that I, that I have commandeered and I love having that space, especially for storing larger pieces that don't fit inside a, a tracing paper pad. I feel so lucky to have a space all my own. I remember when I first started my journey of learning pastel painting, I would try to do it in every, any little, any little spare space that I had. I had some really, really small kids back then. And so now that I have this little dedicated room, it is so wonderful to just think of it as a little sanctuary for myself and my art. I keep it pretty sacred. I don't have a TV in here. I listen to a lot of music in here, mostly music that brings me joy and helps me to feel lighter. I like candles, I have lamps, I make everything about it as beautiful as possible because I want those feelings to come out in my paintings. So I encourage you to carve out a special place just for you, even if it's a corner of your dining room or your bedroom or a closet or your coffee table. Make it special, build a sanctuary and keep painting. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to help support this content coming out, please consider visiting my Patreon page. The link is right here. I have several support levels and every little bit helps and I love my patrons. So thank you so, so much. I will see you soon. Bye.